We need to get rid of the ball. Okay, so I've got a lot of people who are interested in A-liners who don't own them, who think they might want to own one. So I'm working on doing a video now of if you're going to buy a used A-liner or even a new A-liner, check it out really good. So let's go over the my A-liner, which is a well-used <laughs> old A-liner. Mine's a 20... 08 so it's 12 years old and it's been driven hard road road hard put away wet and it's still in pretty good shape actually for what it's been through it's still in pretty good shape so let's start with some of the easy stuff we'll look at the uh, the axle and the tires and uh, the suspension all right come on down underneath the trailer first of all take a good look at your tires and don't just look at the tread on the outer edge look at the tread way in here is it the same depth in here as it is out here take something to measure it um, because a lot of these trailers they come with a 2,000 pound axle and as soon as uh, they get it full of gear, it's overloaded, and that causes the tires to wear on the inside and not on the outside. And you would not look at that or see that unless you really get down on the bottom and look from the end. They're pretty even on both sides, inside and out. And if I look that while we're down here, let's look at the axle. And you can see that this part of the axle is sloping down. It's sloping towards the ground. It's not parallel to the ground. It's not flat. It's got a nice slope to it. And that's what these axles should be. They should be downward sloping. Now, they sometimes do make them so they're flat. They're absolutely level with the ground which gives a little softer ride, but this part of the axle is the, the torsion part. This is where the brake goes. I do not have brakes on mine. You should have a brake drum here. Um, and you don't want to see a lot of oil and stuff. You can see on the back of my axle, it's got some, some oil staining, grease staining. It's got a little oil in it, not bad considering how I run it. If I look at the axle in the trailer and I get the camera just right, you can see that it's not bent or anything like that. It's a nice flat axle. You can also see over on the far side, you can see the bolts are in the axle. Also, take a look at your stabilizers. Are they in good shape? Are they straight? Have they been bent? They should have space between the stabilizer and the frame. Now the frame on my 2008 is a three inch frame. And even that's pushing it. <laughs> so um, I think they made them four inches. I did reinforce my frame with a little four by one or a four by two metal thing that was welded to the frame. I think that uh, made it a bit stronger. When I did that, I raised the trailer up four inches, gave it a little more clearance on the front and the back. And um, I raised up the axle by adding 15 inch tires when I raised that up. When I added those four inches, I could then raise up the, put a bigger tire in there because the wheel well was, had more room. Now the other thing you want to look at when you look at your trailer is you always want to look on the inside of the wheel well and make sure there's never been any damage in there. This is an important area because when somebody has a blowout, um, it destroys this interior. This is, that 
is just cheap tin and it's just sealed in there fairly well but you want to make sure that there's no damage in there because that will cause a lot of damage to the trailer um, but look at the frame underneath make sure the frame is is straight lines down the underside of the trailer and the underside of the floor isn't rotten or soft any places now on my trailer my hot water tank had a drain that I have since disconnected and I ought to cut this off and seal this up but you want to make sure there's no soft spots on the floor underneath especially in the corners you want to look for bug nests like that <laughs> One or two isn't bad, but um, if there's a lot, it means the trailer has sit a long time. You want to look for rust on the frame. Again, a little bit's not bad, but if you don't want any rust through or anything like that. And of course, you want to look at all the gas lines underneath the trailer and make sure they're not crimped or bent or hit or have any damage to them. They run the whole length of the trailer on the outside, and there's quite a few connections if you've got a classic or an expedition. Since we're on the outside of the trailer and talking about wheels, um, let's talk about the spare tire. This spare tire hangs on the, the bumper with a couple of um, bolts or clamps or C clamps, whatever they call those things. And it it comes up here to this. This doesn't have much space from the tire rack to the back of the trailer. So one of the things that I found on my trailer is that when I bought it, there was a hole here from where they had um, backed into the wall or something, backed into a tree and hit the spare tire and it put a hole in there. Now I patch that up with some fiberglass that I had from fixing a canoe at home. I, I found that um, as I was going over the trailer, cleaning it up once I got it home. So I didn't know to look good. While we're back here, these things, um, these are the seals on your hinges for the roof. And they should be um, nice. Oh, look at a little ladybug just came down to be in the movie. We're being photobombed by the mugs. Um, they should be firm, but a little pliable. No cracks or crevices or openings in these corner things. No bulgings. They should be nice and flat. You know, the springs are right here. So if there's any bulge in the back, look. Look down the trailer like this, and you sh it should be a nice, straight, even view. No... Uh, no bulges, no indentations or anything like that. I think all the new trailers are equipped like this. So there's no mouse hole. On the older ones, there's a mouse hole and the cord comes out of here. You, you bring the cord out and uh, you have 30 or 40 feet of, <laughs> of great big cable stuffed in here where your electrical panel is. And I didn't like that, so I cut this out right away and put this in there. Um, and it's pretty easy to do. I have a video on how to do that. If you're looking at a trailer with a regular cord and mouse hole, change that as soon as you can. Now behind this is your refrigerator. And you can just turn these with your fingers and pull this right out. And you can see I've got two fans in here that I've installed because the real fan made too much noise and there's a switch inside you can turn it on. It is um, thermostatically connected, so it, you might not be able to get it to turn on unless it's really hot in here. But you can look in here and make sure that um, that fridge is plugged in. Like, this is a 110 plug. It goes into the regular 110 power system in here. Make sure there's no animal nests or anything in here. No birds or wasps nest or bees or anything like that. So. When you pull this off, be careful. Don't get don't get stung or anything. So that goes right back, and you can take off the lower one too, and look again. Look for mice nests or 
uh, insect nests or anything like that. My trailer has a hot water tank and you can open this again and look at this. It opens pretty easy ah, and comes off. And you might even pull this out of the hot water tank if it's not full. Um, mine's empty because it's still winterized. And this is the uh, anode tank thing. And if it's in good shape, it's probably all right. But one of my wires is off. So um, that means this would not have worked. And I've got a wasp nest on top of my uh, pressure relief valve. <laughs> I don't see any wasps. It must be from last year or something. I didn't use that all last year. I'm going to use it this year or something. So I'm going to got to get it in shape. But um, one of the wires is off. So that would not have worked. And I think I took that off because I had it empty. You don't want it if you're not going to use it. And you're going to pull this out of here so that it stays drained. Um, you want to make sure that... Uh, that's unplugged because otherwise if you ever turn it on by mistake if you just hit the switch you'll burn up your trailer because this is you know this is a gas fired appliance and it lights automatically but you can look at that and see that there's uh, a few spiders in here um, so it might not work it might but that's the hot water tank and again it's easy to pull that off and take a look at that now this piece right here of course is the uh, water tank and hook up this is where you'd hook up your shore water if you are got uh, you got public water supply that you can just put a put a hose into there and uh, I don't use mine very much so it's a little stiff but you can check that and you can check the water tank make sure the lid comes off and everything's all right in there there's no green or any no green or anything coming out of there and it doesn't smell bad or anything like that. Again, no insects or animals living in there. This, of course, is the outside shower. And it's, on mine, I've changed the, changed the showers to another type that just plugs in here. Um, normally, it would be all wrapped, the hose would be wrapped in here, the handle would be in here, and it would only be about two and a half feet long. I've got one that's got a nine foot cord on it and so it doesn't all fit in here and it's like a telephone cord it, it, it's expandable but um, you know you want to make sure these are these are one of the places that freeze in the winter and, and crack so if you don't have water in the trailer when you're checking it um, you might not know that these are cracked and they're going to leak when you put on the water pump. I guess I can also talk about hatches. Um, my hatches I've changed to this push button latch. Um, it does have a key in it. I can lock them, but um, you, the other ones you have to you have to lock them to, to open them and unlock them just like this. So you're always having your keys with you. So I like this a lot better. I don't worry about things getting stolen at camp. Never had anything stolen. So uh, compare but they shut and they're watertight. They're nice, nice seal, flush. Now I believe most A-liners still come with just one tank. I added a second tank to my A-liner um, because I didn't ever want to run out. Um, and usually if you have two tanks, they have a automatic regulator that switches between the tanks when one gets empty. I don't do that. I have one line and I switch it between the tanks because that way if it runs out, um, I just go out and switch the line. Um, I know it ran out. I know it's empty. I know that it's good to be recharged, refilled, and I have a whole full one still left. So I'm always chasing that empty one. I don't ever have to chase propane. The battery on most A-liners is on the tongue. Um, some people like to put them inside. If you have a lithium cell battery or an AGM, you could put it inside. It takes some weight off the tongue. Um, Personally, I like to have a little weight on the tongue because um, I like to put a lot of stuff in the back hatch. I have a lot of weight in the back of the A-liner, which kind of isn't good for the frame, but like I said, I've had the frame reinforced. Just assume if you're going to buy a trailer, you're going to have to buy a uh, battery. And the best batteries in the world, if you're just going to get a regular deep cycle battery, is to go to Walmart 
and buy a $80 battery that's a 80 amp hour battery and it'll last you three or four years until you figure out how much power you're really going to be using um, you know that'll run your fridge for four hours if you're traveling somewhere um, on battery alone uh, if you need if you're going to put on solar it 80 amp hour battery will be just fine it'll you know you can't charge more than about 40 amps 40 amp hours with a 100 watt panel anyways in in two days so if you're using more than uh, 40 amp hours in a day you need to talk to yourself about what you're using power for now the other thing you want to look at is the plug um, the you know a lot of uh, harm and damage can come to the electrical system on a trailer with the plug if there's you know burn marks or corrosion marks on the plug you might want to uh, you know make sure that the whole electrical system is in good shape we'll we'll visit the electrical box inside um, show you some of that but I would highly recommend that you hook this up to a vehicle and make sure all the lights work uh, that's an important part uh, even a brand new trailer I've seen them wired wrong where the left turn signal blinks to the right <laughs> and the right turn signal blinks to the left don't don't overlook this little cord because it's just hanging here sometimes they zip tie it out of the way so people don't even see them let's talk about the inside of the trailer you can tell a lot of things on the inside of course and you can see especially on a bright day like this is there any sun coming through the cracks um, around the trailer it uh, would tell you how much weather stripping needs to be replaced and back here are the springs Let me zoom into those are the springs that help lift the roof up and down and there are a lot of people on the internet that get quite crazy if these aren't perfectly straight against the back wall I did change my springs and put new ones in. I tried to straighten them out, but I found out that the hole they're in is like that. So there's no way to there's no way to to change it. They're like that permanently. So I don't think that that's a big issue. Um, one of the things you might want to look at on the inside is the curtains. Are they the right size to reach the Velcro or whatever holds them down? My curtains, I washed my curtains, and so they no longer fit. I have to like they don't go down to the velcro anymore um let me show you that and again this was stupidity on my part i didn't realize they would shrink but this one goes down to where the velcro is that holds them down this one does not it will not reach down there um unless i really stretch it so curtains are expensive these it's 180 dollars for a set of curtains from a liner that makes them perfect for the windows and everything and there's a lot of ways these attach some of them snap on mine go on with velcro and they're real easy to take down and put up um, they make a huge difference with the amount of heat that comes in the trailer um, if i open the window and and put these down um, none of the heat comes in the trailer it stays outside um, air conditioner again try this um, I've replaced mine three times um, once you've replaced it once it's pretty easy to replace it again now my trailer came with a couch back here I have cushions that go across the back and a cushion here that you can sit on and it makes it a nice couch except I'm too tall I hit my head so I can't really use it as a couch so I turned it into a full-time bed and it, it's just a twin bed at the moment it will go to a uh, I think it, actually it'll go to a queen but I I'm sure it'll go to a full size but I don't need that much room and I don't want the dog sleeping with me in the trailer so um, I have a twin bed that actually has no dog hair on it no dog hair anywhere in this area despite having two dogs at one time in here that were just hair bags you want to check the lights inside and out um, Anybody who owns a trailer these days hopefully has changed all the lights to LEDs. On mine you can look in, there's a little clear spot in the middle. You can look in and see that they're LED lights. You got plugs and stuff inside the trailer, you want to make sure they work. If there's a sink, you want to make sure that that has uh, antifreeze in it <laughs> for the most part. Because if they haven't used it and they've decided to sell it, they probably didn't use it through the winter. And you want to make sure that the 
the water pump works and all that stuff. So now I don't ever use my sink. I have a wash basin in the sink and I put water in this and I heat hot water on the stove. Um, and uh, then I use this for washing dishes or whatever. So I rarely ever use my sink. Now this is the electrical brains of the A-liner and you just push it open, just push it and it pops open. And this has been replaced on mine. Redid it about the second month I had the trailer. I went to a A-liner rally and they said that the ones that come with the A-liners, which is elixirs, are not very good. And this has, uh, this is a 8735, it handles 35 amps. And the other one was a 25, only handled 25 amps. It has all the fuses in it for the 12 volt. This is the 12 volt side. This is the 120 volt side. You can't really tell much about this. You can actually see more if you lift up the seat. Um, you take this out. I can't do that with my bed. I got to take my bed off. But down inside you can see all the wires behind this are right behind here. And the other thing you have down here is you have the pro propane detector. You should, you know, just act like you know what you're doing. Open that. It should have a cover on it. If it doesn't have the cover on it, they do come right off. But um, that means maybe somebody didn't take care of the electrical very much and it had some issues. This here is the uh, thermostat for the furnace in my trailer. I think that's a little different on the new ones. There's the water pump. You can see if that works, of course. The water heater, you don't want to turn that on unless you're sure there's water in it. Although it probably wouldn't hurt just to see if it worked. And you can see the little light. So you can see it, it's wired up. The refrigerator fan switch. My fans are directly run, so you can actually hear them running behind the refrigerator. And then there's the 110 volt outlets, which I keep um, a nightlight in there just so I know when they're on. If I plug them in and they don't go on, I know there's trouble. Of course, on the ceiling is the fantastic fan and you always want to make sure these work. And then if it's fully electric, it goes up and down. And they normally go in or out. So mine's in good for working shape right at the moment. Now my trailer has a, it's the bigger fridge. The smaller fridge usually has a stove on top. So I have the inside outside stove. I can take my stove and put it on top of here. I can put my stove, I can put my stove up here like this and cook on it. There's a gas line right side of the fridge that I can hook into, but I don't think I would ever cook inside an A-liner. It's too small an area. You can get grease and smells and everything all over. And even though you could run the fantastic fan um, to take out most of the odors and stuff, I still would. Now this is where the stove hangs and you want to make sure that that's a good solid piece of, of the, the trailer. It has interior uh, reinforcement to make it sure it's good. And you can see this, this doesn't move. The wall doesn't move. It's not soft or anything. So that's good. That's good, and I don't know why people are afraid of that. It's, this is my curtain for the back window, and mine goes up. A lot of them come down. I don't know why. <laughs> or, or, a lot of them come up to close and down to open. I like this. This is this is a dual layer one. So you got light shade, and then you got heavier shade. Neither one of them really block out the light completely. But you want to check these around the window. The bubble windows, they get nasty. Uh, they just, they're just Lexan plastic. They're pretty durable, um, but they just get scratched. You don't want to wash them with anything like Windex or ammonia or anything like that. If you want to wash them, you just use soap and water, Dawn, and a, a microfiber cloth, and they'll stay a long time. Let's talk about cushions. Cushions. You can tell the wear on cars, trailers, everything by the cushions. A-liner cushions are not known to be real comfortable to sleep on. 
if you use the cushions for a mattress to sleep on or you're going to have somebody other than little kids um, they're probably going to notice that they're pretty uncomfortable a lot of people change their cushions so if you've got a if you're looking at a used day liner you want to ask if they've ever changed the cushions or what they thought of them and give them a good squeeze test to see if you think uh, or a tush test but you know if you try to squeeze these these are hard as a rock um, so I've never been able to sleep on them I slept on them probably two camping trips and then immediately changed to a mattress because it was just really too much the other things of course you want to try um, if you're looking at buying a used a-liner is uh, make sure the appliances work run the furnace run the microwave and if somebody wants to sell you an a-liner and you're gonna come you're gonna travel a ways to see it ask them to turn the fridge on so it'll be cold when you get there tell them to put an ice cube tray in the freezer section and uh, a bucket of water or a pan of water in the refrigerator section so you can see what the actual temperature is in the fridge you know it, it'll take eight to ten hours to cool down a fridge check all that check all the the water pump check the hot water heater if you're concerned with that um, all those things need to be checked so I think that's enough to give you a start if you're looking at an a-liner um, make sure you're happy you're gonna be happy with it there is a lot of them out there they don't there's not a lot of them all at once but there's a lot of them out there that come for sale every couple weeks there's another one out there so I believe all these hints and tricks probably apply to any trailer and especially any pop-up trailer you want to make sure that all the things that are in the trailer work thanks for watching appreciate you coming by hope everybody's safe from the covid virus don't forget subscribe if you haven't push that thumbs up give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down don't just complain give me one or the other and uh leave me a comment on what else you think should be looked at in a trailer we'll see you in the next video bye bye folks